Welcome to the Talk with Clouds podcast. Your host is Katie Ann, an island girl on a journey with her guests to learn about their backgrounds, businesses, passions, experiences, life lessons, and wins. Come and laugh, cheer, learn, and plan with us. My friend, take some time to come and talk with Clouds. Welcome to Talk with Clads. My name is Katie Ann and I will be your host for today. We have a special, special, special guest in the house. We have Miss Davina Patterson. Davina is the executive director of the organization, the Disability Resource Network. And I am so excited to talk about this organization because they are out there doing great and big things. So let me tell you a little bit about Davina. Davina joined Disability Resource Network in February 2020. She's a graduate of the University of Alabama at Birmingham with a Bachelor of Science degree in Health Administration and a minor in Community Health Education and African American Studies. She's originally from Eufaula, Alabama, and has been a resident of Madison, Alabama since 2012. Davina has been working in healthcare for over 15 years. Prior to her employment with Disability Resource Network, she served as a business manager for four years at a federally qualified health center where she managed three sites in Northwest Alabama. She also worked at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alabama, UAB Hospital, and the Birmingham VA Medical Center. So talk about someone that is qualified. There's more. Davina completed her management internship at the Children's Hospital of Alabama in corporate compliance. She's an active member of the Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. She's on the advisory board at Ross Medical Education Center for the medical assistant and medical billing and the office administration program. So, Davina, welcome to Talk with Clads. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and the organization that you represent. Oh, wow. You did a very great job with introducing me. A little bit more about myself that that you didn't mention. I love nonprofits. I just love working with nonprofits and working and doing a lot of community work, community service. So that's probably one thing that... I love to communicate to others. A little more about our organization. We're the newly established Center for Independent Living in the state of Alabama. We're located in Huntsville, Alabama, but we service 13 counties in North Alabama. And our center was formed in October of 2021. So we're the new kids on the block. <laughs> oh, wow. So is this a qualified nonprofit organization? Is it, a, is it a 501c3? Absolutely. We are a nonprofit 501c3 organization. We achieved that milestone in October of 2021. Oh, so that was always the goal. That was always the plan to become a freestanding center for independent living independently in the state of Alabama to service the consumers in the North Alabama region of the state. Okay. And so now do you have, like, what are your goals going forward for, like, 2022? For 2022, we're trying to expand and grow our services. Right now, we're just offering the five core services, but we would like to add on to the current services that we have. Okay. And tell us a little bit more, because in, in looking up the Disability Resource Network and reading a little bit more, what I came across was what was referred to as the independent living movement, which I didn't know anything about. So tell right. me a little bit more about the independent living movement. Oh, the independent living movement, it started on the West Coast. At the University of California at Berkeley, one of the four founders was Ed Roberts. He was a person with a disability, and it started around the 1970s. It was influenced by the Civil Rights Movement and the Disability Rights Movement. So both of those movements 
they influenced heavily the independent living movement and it really sparked the independent living movement to become into fruition and that's how it was formed and started. Okay. And so in your experience, what does Nothing About Us Without Us by James Charlton mean? And why do you think that has become so popular behind the independent living movement? It's a part of the independent living philosophy. We are a consumer controlled organization, which means that nothing happens without people with disabilities. They are a part of the decision making and they are the ones that provide the direct services. 51% of the staff and 51% of the board members are people with disabilities. And that's good because your organization reflects who they represent. Absolutely. Absolutely. We use the peer-to-peer model and the, instead of the medical model. And what the peer-to-peer model does, it, it really displays that a person with a disability can relate and learn from the life experiences of another person with a disability. So it's very, very important, especially with the obstacles that people with disabilities face with receiving employment. It's important that our centers have staff and board members that are people. Independent living is something that someone who is not disabled sometimes takes for granted. What do you think that the term independent living means to someone who is disabled? And how does your organization use this to develop programs? Independent living, what it means to a person that has a disability, it means that they can operate and function in the community at the same way as a person without a disability, that they have the same rights as a person without a disability, that they don't live in isolation or segregation. They can live on their own. They can work or have an opportunity to provide for themselves on their own. And it also means that they get to make their own decisions. They don't have to be under the guardianship of someone else, but they can completely live independently on their own and be self-sufficient and self-sustaining in the community and contribute to the community, just like people without disabilities. Yeah. The programs that we have for people with disabilities that promote independent living are our five core services. Everything about our five core services promote people living independently. We're teaching people with disabilities how to speak up for themselves independent living skills. We're teaching our consumers how to care for themselves, how to provide basic functions and skills to live on their own. Peer support is like a support group where people with disabilities gather and we talk about different things in the community or just topics of interest. And not only is our peer support hour limited to people with disabilities, But we invite the community, we invite organizations, we invite agencies, allies, advocates, consumers to gather and discuss these things. Information and referrals is a point of service where we offer resources for people with disabilities that's trying to find housing, trying to find employment, trying to find transportation. So everything that we do, all of our programs, empower people with disabilities to live independently. Yeah. And I I really like that you're empowering, you know, individuals with disability, like they're not just thrown aside, you know, we care for you and we're going to advocate for you and we're going to advocate for your independence. And one of the things I heard you mention was that, you know, you invite different organizations to come in and participate and learn more and be educated on the subject. So how does your organization compare to other organizations working for the same cause? And do you partner with other organizations? Absolutely. We, we definitely do partner with other organizations. We were just a part of a Zoom call the other day where we met with the organization and we talked about how we can come together and, and provide services and be a care team. Sometimes we share consumers. You know, we may get a referral from an organization. They're working with the consumer, but the consumer may need other services that we offer. So we work with other organizations to provide care, to come together and discuss a plan of care for the consumer. 
We also work with other organizations because we do offer similar services. So how can we come together and provide a service and where the community can benefit? You know, so we're open to collaborations and partnerships at any time. And the way that we differ from some of the other organizations that are very similar to ours, we are consumer controlled. 51% of our staff and 51% of our board members are people with disabilities. So we have that peer-to-peer model in Centers for Independent Living. A person with a disability can come to our facility or come to our office, and they are going to receive care or they're going to have services being provided by one of their peers, someone that has a disability. So that's one of the differences. Another way that we differ from other organizations is that we're a cross-disability, cross-disability organization, which means that we service people with all disabilities. We don't just focus on one disability, but we service individuals with disabilities that have any disability. We also provide services for people that self-identify as a person with a disability. So no documentation, medical records, office notes is needed for someone to receive services. It's only, it's offered and it's available for those that say that they have a disability. So we don't make them prove that they have a disability or provide any documentation. We take their word for it and we take, we take the consumer in. Oh, that's really good. So how does someone go apart? Like if I'm a consumer, of being a consumer, I should say, if I identify as someone that's disabled or if I'm a caregiver of someone who is disabled and they want to transition into being more independent, how do I enroll in services? Well, you can start the process by contacting us. Our main number is 256-403-0033. When you call, you just need to let us know your intentions or your plan or what services you're looking for. We also have a service application on our website. Our website is www.drn256.org. So you can go ahead and fill out an application. That application is going to come to our system, and then it'll be assigned to one of our staff members so that they can follow up with you. So it's important that you fill out those required fields, the phone number and address, so that we can schedule some time to start an intake session. So that's how a person can begin services with us or initiate services with us. Okay. All right. Very good to know. So reach out to her on the website or call the main number if you are interested in service. It's a great organization. I wanted to change the the way we're going a little bit because I know that we are going through a global pandemic right now. The world was halted by a global pandemic. And now we have a new norm, which is COVID-19. CLAD's resources and consulting values its customers. Our planner footsteps to my vision is a 13 month planner that can be used for five years. It walks you through SMART goals, SWOT analysis, action planning, and holds you accountable through three monthly check-ins. We work only with top quality materials, innovative designs, and verified suppliers which are guaranteed to deliver to our high expectations because when it comes to our customer satisfaction, there's no room for compromise. Made with high quality PU leather and paper planner helps you focus on achieving your goals by giving you a sense of personal and professional satisfaction. Some of the amazing features of this product, vision board planner, luxury pen, eight gigabyte USB flash drive, wireless mouse, ultra elegant packaging box, available in five stunning colors, black, red, gold, pink, navy blue. Material, PU leather, 13 month planner, elastic band for easy handling. Our footsteps to my vision is available at Amazon, Facebook, Instagram, our website, and at Walmart. You may also follow us at www.cladsresources.com, Instagram, Clads Resources, Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Clads Resources forward slash. You're listening to Talk with Clads. Find more resources online at cladsresources.com. 
Now back to the show with your host, Katie Ann. So how has the COVID-19 pandemic affected the Disability Resource Network? Well, you know, our organization, we started right in the middle of the pandemic, right? February 2020 was when I was hired. The very next month, it was announced that we were on shutdown. Mm -hmm. So we started right in the middle of the pandemic. We've never worked or in our setting outside the pandemic. Some of the existing centers, they were already operating and they were already working, but we were established in the middle of the pandemic. So it has greatly affected our center. The whole time we work remotely, we work remotely. We don't work in the office because of the pandemic. That's one way it's affected our center. It's also affected our center by our staff and our consumers being people with disabilities. Sometimes they have issues with their immune system. So we have to limit the face-to-face with them. We can't go into the homes <laughs> like we would have been able to do before the pandemic. So we have to provide services remotely and virtually. All of our services have been provided remotely and has also been provided virtually. So that's how the pandemic has affected ours in so many ways. And it's a great way that you were able to adapt and provide those services remotely so that they are still not losing any types of services that you offer. So I know that, you know, recently the current administration had a federal mandate for the COVID vaccine, especially if you're receiving federal funding. So how does that COVID-19 mandate affect your organization? Well, we've been able to partner with Alabama Department of Public Health and also disability vaccine access opportunities. We've been able to partner with both of those entities in order to do some training and workshops around and awareness around the COVID-19 vaccines. So it's something that we are definitely trying to promote. We are definitely trying to get into our communities and do some training, bring some awareness, and also any platform that we're able to be on to speak out about COVID-19 vaccines and how it affects people with disabilities, how to also work with local health departments and other agencies to make vaccines accessible for people with disabilities. Some people with disabilities have transportation and mobility issues, so they may not be able to go to a vaccine appointment or may not be able to be in a setting where it's heavily populated. So we've been working with those organizations to try to find a solution or come up with a plan to assist people with disabilities to get access to vaccines. Okay. So have you seen, like, what feedback have you received from the medical community? Are they making it more accessible to those who cannot go and get the vaccines? Absolutely. Our local health department, they actually do send a nurse out to the home for people that have mobility, transportation issues, or if they voice or request someone to come into their home. The local health department is working with the consumers to make sure that they see their COVID vaccine and that it's in an accessible way, even if they have to come to their home. There also have been you know, drive-through clinics where people can drive through and get vaccines as well. There are hospitals and there are also universities that are also providing mobile vaccine units that can come to our campus or they're placed in the community where people with disabilities or people in the community can come to those sites and come to those different campuses and receive vaccinations as well. Okay, so it's becoming more accessible to members of that population. Yes, ma'am, it is. The goal is for everybody to be vaccinated. This pandemic has really, you know, brought to everyone's awareness about, and the goal is for everybody to be vaccinated. So what they're trying to do is work with the community to make sure they're being vaccinated. If that means that they have to be planted in the communities to distribute the vaccine, whatever needs to happen. We're trying to get people vaccinated. It's for everyone to be vaccinated. And there are a lot of funds 
that are being distributed so that people can receive vaccinations. That's very, very wonderful. So if I want to be a consumer or a customer of Disability Resource Network, is there an expense to it for me? Our five core services are available to anyone that that's seeking services. So if we receive state funds, our center is a Part B center, which means that we receive state funding and the services are available to anyone with a disability. Now, when we add services or there are certain grants and there may be certain programs where someone may need certain requirements to be eligible for those, then that may come into effect. But at this time, for just our general basic core services, all centers have to offer those services. For our center, it's covered through the state funds that we receive. Okay, and that actually covers, like, the support. So for, like, let's talk about volunteers. Like, what's the process if someone wanted to volunteer? How do I become a volunteer for your organization? And is that even available? Yes, we accept volunteers. Our board is a volunteer board. So we definitely accept volunteers. We're working with a lot of the universities here, the local universities. A part of our work with them is that we sponsor a student, that a student has to come in and we're an externship site. So they provide, they are interns for our center. So that's a form of volunteering yeah. for students. And we also accept just volunteers for the community. If you're interested in learning more or just joining in and helping out where you can as far as our outreach, our programs, or things that we need in the office, we're definitely open to it. We invite you and and you're welcome to come and volunteer for our organization. Okay. That's really good to know that, you know, you have students that are coming in and learning more about your organization and and the nonprofit world. So how can I, like, if I wanted to support your organization and I cannot volunteer, how can I support your organization? Well, we accept donations. We are a 501c3 organization. Our donations are tax exempt, so you can definitely donate. You can donate on our website, www.drn256.org, or you can contact myself as the executive director. My email address is dpatterson at drn256.org. Reach out to me and we can set up a time or make some arrangements to get everything processed so that you can send in a donation. Okay. And do you accept other types of donation other than volunteer hours and financial donations? Yeah, we're open to whatever donations that you offer or that's available as long as it's not a conflict with our policies and procedures and our mission statement, then sure. Okay, very good. So again, what is the contact information for your organization? (laughs) Our contact information, our website is www.drn256.org. Our phone number is area code 256-403-0033. Our email address is drnal256 at gmail.com. You can find us on Instagram at drnal256. Facebook, you can find us at Disability Resource Network. So we are out. We're in the community. You can find us if you're looking for us. Our address is 415 Church Street Northwest, Suite 11, Huntsville, Alabama, 35801. So we're accessible for all. If you're looking for us, that's our contact information. So you're on the social media. There is a location, there is a phone number, there is a website, so very, very visible. And I like to ask my guests this question before I actually end the interview. So what is one thing or one question that I did not ask you today that you would have liked for me to ask? I don't have one. I don't have one. Everything that you asked, it was what I was interested in or open or available to discuss and it's pretty much what everyone asks. So I don't have anything. I think that's pretty much everything. 
covered everything. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, Davina, thank you so much for joining well, us today you. and thank letting you. us thank you so much. <laughs> letting us know about the Disability Resource Network. Everyone, remember you can follow them on Facebook, Instagram. You can go on the website at www.drn256.org. Davina, thank you again. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for taking some time to talk with CLADS. Bye, guys. Thanks for listening. Find us on social media at CLADS Resources and online at www.cladsresources.com. Our planner, Footsteps to My Vision, is also located on our website or on Facebook, Instagram, or Amazon. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and check back weekly for new episodes. Until next time, keep creating your footpath to your vision.